Okay, real quick here. Uh, regarding um, putting... There we go. Regarding putting bushings into the uh, crank arm of an air motor. I will try to stay in frame here. I want to show you first I've got three different three different types of bushing cloth here. Uh, this one this one is uh, just under four hundredths of an inch. This one is five hundredths of an inch. And this one is and this one is just a hair over five hundredths of an inch. So how do you know which of these should be used? How do you know which one of these should be used for the bushing? Well first you can look at the old bushing and we'll measure it and see that it's four hundredths of an inch but it's also ninety years old so obviously this cloth which is brand new and just under uh, four hundred thousandths or four thousandths four hundredths oh, excuse me is not going to be the right cloth this felt right here doesn't have any weave in it and so it stretches see it stretches in both directions and a cloth like this is not going to last very long. This cloth right here doesn't stretch and it's also got a weave. This is what they call woven a bushing felt. The reason that this is the correct size even though it's just over a hundredth of an inch or ten thousandths of an inch thicker than the original is because it's brand new and it's never been compressed this has been compressed by usage and actually this one is also contaminated with grease or oil um, that was put on there unfortunately unfortunately that was put on there uh, evidently to try to make the motor run better at some point in the life of the motor um, so that's not uh, a really good example but what's more important here and what I want to show you is that when it comes to the size of uh, the piece of cloth the best thing to do is to use uh, the original cloth and measure it and in this case uh, the cloth is uh, just about um, 80 hundredths of an inch um, or 0.8 inches um, and I'm going to show you this piece right here even though it's the wrong thickness is just over is just over uh, nine and a half um, or 95 hundredths of an inch. This piece right here is 7 hundredths of an inch. And I want to show you the difference when you put that in there and, and why it's so important that you have the correct size. At 7 hundredths of an inch, when you put the cloth in, and then you look very very closely look very very closely right down in here you can actually see that there's a tiny bit of a space 
Uh, you really can't see that on the video, but there's a tiny bit of a space between these two pieces of cloth. So that's unsatisfactory. But we're going to take a piece, right, piece of cloth here that's, even though it's too thin, uh, it's um, point one, or a 15 hundredths of an inch wider than the original piece of cloth. And what's interesting to note about this is that when you put it in, I'll take it all the way to the end here because that's where the that's where it's the widest. It actually appears that this it actually appears that this is a pretty good fit even when you put the the rod in when you put the rod in here, it's a pretty snug fit. Right? Almost what you would think would be adequate. But what's interesting about this is that when you actually look down inside the hole, what you see is that the cloth, because of the fact that the cloth is too big, it's actually compressing inside of the hole and then it's billowing out on itself. The cloth is actually billowing out on itself and, and creating a, a, a convex uh, piece inside. You really can't see that in the video, but I'll try to show you. You can see that that's actually uh, much smaller on the inside. Ah, heck. That the diameter of the hole on the inside I'll go ahead and pull this through again. Even though these two pieces of cloth seem to mate at the top, in other words, they're not folding over on each other, uh, when you look down inside the hole, I'm going to try to get this right to the... Oh, <laughs> oh all right, one more time. careful this time. Well now unfortunately now it folded over on itself because it got right down to the very end. Uh, come on get in frame. As I pull this on down you can see how the you can see down inside there okay come on You can see down inside how the hole is collapsed on the inside as compared to the diameter of the hole on the outside. The amount of space on the inside is much less because the cloth is actually billowing out on the inside to compensate for the fact that it's too wide. But we, when we get the right size cloth, the right thickness and the right width, And of course this cloth is, is thicker. This cloth is a hundredth of an inch thicker than the other cloth. But you can see that the hole is actually wider. You can see that the hole in the center is actually wider uh, in diameter. The inner, di the inner diameter uh, is actually wider than it was with the, with the thinner cloth because it's not billowing out. It's laying nice and flat all the way around the hole. Um, the second thing I wanted to show you uh, is, you know, since it does have this split right here, the, quest the question comes up, you know, where is the correct place to put the split? In other words, is it important uh, as far as where you would have the cloth turned? Right? And the rule of thumb is that since the the work uh, since the work that the bellow does is pulling in in other words that the bellow collapses the bellow pulls in 
as it's doing it uh, it's, as it's on the work stroke. Um, uh, so you want the cloth, you want the the open section of the cloth to be opposite of where the camshaft is pulling, or in this case pushing, in other words, the the the, um, the crank rod is pushing, it's pushing on the on the pushing on the armature. And it's pushing it around, of course, because it starts at top dead center. When it's when it's fully open, the bellows fully open. I'm trying to get this in here. We get my arm out of the way. When when the when the bellow starts its power stroke, the position of the of the crank sh crankshaft is right here. And then as it pushes it in, it pushes it like that. Okay. So you want the position of this weakest spot, which is of course where the cloth is joined, you want that opposite of the place where the bellow is doing, the, where the, where the bit bushing is doing the most work. And where that is, is right there. Approximately 45 degrees off center at the back side. And that's where it would get, and that's where the bushing would get glued in. As far as gluing the bushing in, let's take hide glue, put the glue on the bushing, make sure you get it edge to edge. You don't want to get it on the, on the actual edge, it'll actually squeeze in a little bit. But make sure you get it edge to edge. I gotta check myself here. Make sure I'm in the right position. There we go. Pull it on in. And then what I do is I actually push it back out and pull it back in. A couple of times I want to get that, I want to get a little bit of glue on the back side. I like to get just a little bit of glue on the back side here. Because of course it squeezes out a little bit as you're pulling it through. A little bit of the glue is going to squeeze out. I got it set. I trim it off. I know what I do. I don't know what other technicians do, but what I do after I finish doing that is I actually go ahead and put the rod in, and then I'll let it dry for about oh 15 minutes or so, 10-15 minutes until the glue gels. I don't want to let it dry all the way um, because then the glue gets hard. And it's much much harder to cut. Uh, as far as cutting, use I use a I use a carpet knife because carpet knives are extremely sharp, um, and I use a carpet knife to trim it. I do not try to trim it while it's still wet. Um, uh, I find that it ends up getting fibers all over everything, and it just makes a mess. So I just wait until it's uh, I just wait until it's set. It doesn't take that long. And then actually, in the meantime, you can go ahead and do another one. And normally, with the crank rod the way that it is, you could actually stack them here. You could do one or two, and then you could do one, put it on the other side. So you, by the time you get the second or third one done, um, you're ready to go ahead. You're ready to go ahead and trim. You're ready to go ahead and trim it off anyhow. So that's how I do it. That's why I do it, and that's what I. That's how I choose my materials.